Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Excalibur Roundtable Tech Talk. I am Mike Fuson. We're continuing our extended Tech Talk series uh, with our friends from Halo ITSM. I have Tom Petley from Halo with me here today. Tom, thank you again for joining us. Hi, Mike. Hey, great to be here. And uh, one of the topics that we talked about uh, really giving uh, uh, customers, prospective customers, a deep dive into um, is Halo's ability to uh, do our customizations with our forms and the forms capability that's built into Halo. Uh, one of the key key things in any um, IT service management system is the ability to adapt it to suit you know our, my particular needs as a customer. Um, certain pieces of data or metrics that I need to track. Um, we want the flexibility to be able to do that um, for ourselves. Um, Halo, of course, is a low-code, no-code platform that makes that uh, the ability to add those things and create those things very, very simple, very, very easy to do. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to you. Let's dive into that and let's look at just how easy it is to adapt our forms within Halo ITSM. Yeah, fantastic. Let me share my screen now. Okay, share my screen now. So today, yeah, today's a little bit different. We're going to go a little bit deeper into the configuration of exactly how the forms are built. So I'm going to show you a little bit about um, how to add fields, how to um, kind of reorder fields, how to make them a bit dynamic and mandatory and things like that. So we're going to go into a little bit of the configuration. Um, but yeah, as you said, Mike, it's yeah, no code. It's going to be stuff we're just doing purely with configuration. Um, you don't have to code or know any of the, the database information. It's purely just um, kind of almost as you, as you see it. Um, so I'm going to head over to, this is our self-service side. This is where we might raise a new starter request from. So we've just got an out-of-the-box form here. We've got first name, we've got last name, employee ID. But what I'd like to show you today is how we can add an additional field to here and kind of show you some of the, the dynamic uh, visibility we can do from there. I'm going to go over to the, the administrative side and I'm in the configuration area and I'm against our new starter request. Um, within here, this is actually where we set things like the, the default values, whether it's going to start an approval process, which team it's going to be assigned to or resolver group is going to be assigned to once it's raised. What's the SLA that sits behind it? All these kind of key uh, key elements. But the bit I'm going to focus on is the field list and the actual form itself. So if you look at this here, I'm just going to edit this. You'll see here that these fields just correspond to first name, last name, employee ID, start date. They all just correspond to these fields here. So first name, last name, employee ID, start date. And from here, I'm just going to go and add an additional field in. And you'll see here that we have an option to add a field that's already in the system. So one of our system fields, um, kind of things like categories, um, I don't know, contracts, deadlines, those kind of fields. We also have the option to, to add our own custom fields. So I'm going to talk you through that here. Um, this field here, this top field, this is actually the, the system field name. Um, this is the one you'd use in your reporting. So if you do want to report on, on exactly this field, you can just drag that field into your report. The second field is the, um, this is the label, this is the friendly field name. And that's the one that's going to appear on our form under here. And if I just scroll down on here, we have the type of field. And we present you with various options under here. We have the option of a text box, which is just a single line box that looks a bit like this. We have a memo box, which is multiple lines to it, and it looks a bit like this. We then have fields such as, uh, these two are both drop-down fields. So a single selection, you can select one option from the drop-down, and a multi-selection, you can select multiple uh, options from the drop-down. Then there's dates, times, checkboxes, tables. So if you want to allow people to add multiple entries to a, um, to a, on a form, and then rich text um, allow you to put images and screenshots and links and things in there. I thought I'd give an example of a drop down today. Um, we'll just do a single selection drop down. The, with a drop down, you have the option of doing a static list um, or a dynamic list. And a static list is just a simply a list that you just manage within, within here, within Halo in the application. 
And you'll see here that you can just comma separate the values and that will create us three options in the drop down. A dynamic list will allow you to, to look up data from elsewhere. And that could be from other areas in Halo. So it could be that you want to look up you know, populate a user list or maybe a list of all your locations or whatever it is there. You'd use a dynamic list for that. But you can also look up in external tools. So you could look up from, let's say, an HR system or um, sometimes maybe it's a, it's a part, maybe it's a parts lookup you want to do. Um, there's various um, lookup options that you can have in there. And that really helps with automation if you want to take that a step further. Um, I'm going to go for a static list to show you the keep it kind of quite high level today. And if I just scroll down, you'll see there's various options that we can set on here. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there's things like whether it appears in searches, for example, or whether we allow our end users to search on this field. So various, various options within there. But I'm just going to save that as it is. I'm actually going to remove it from here and I'm going to add it to this group so I can show you it in there. If I just go back into here, I'm just going to search that field I just created. I'm going to save that and I'm going to drop it to the top of the list just by dragging it up there. I'll we'll just save that and then save that. You'll see that if I just reload this, we now have that field on there. So there will be 97 to, in, or in my opinion, doesn't stay static. Your, um, things change. There will be different tools that you bring in, different processes that evolve. And you will need to capture different information on the form. It won't be that in day one and in five years time, it's exactly the same process, same form. There will be scenarios where you need to change certain things. Um, so that's why we try and make it as easy as possible for you to make these little tweaks. Um, so we've added this field and from within here, you'll see option one, option two, option three, the three options I just created. So I'll take it one step further and I'll just go to the edit button and edit this field here, so the example field. You'll see that we have additional options basically. Um, so in this scenario, I'm just gonna say, I wanna make it mandatory. I'm going to select a visible required and you'll see there's options within here such as if an end user is raising it maybe it's required maybe if it was a an agent raising it maybe it would be slightly different behavior um, so you can kind of show in five fields based on who's raising it and i'm just going to save that and the other thing i want to do is against this first name field i just want to set the dynamic field visibility rule and if i just scroll down here we have a visibility rule under here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if the field example, I only want to show this first name field if the example field is set equal to option two. And I might do the same with the last name field that so becomes really clear on the portal. Um, so only show this one if the example field is set equal to option two. Again, I'm just going to save that and save that and reload this. You'll see here that now um, those first name and the last name fields are hidden. If I select option one, they remain hidden. But the rule I set up is option two, they're now going to become visible. So we're creating a dynamic form then, and it's really, really straightforward to, um, to create those rules just that I just showed you. Um, Mike, I think that's as far as I wanted to take it today. I want to keep it quite kind of high level there. Um, yeah. Well, and, 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 and what you just what you just said is something important to note too is that the form is truly dynamic. Um, uh, this is not not adapting, and so we've got blank spaces there. The fields don't appear, and the form adjusts based on us choosing a value that causes those fields now to become visible. Um, so we're conserving our screen space, um, and. Uh, when we have a m mobile experience, et cetera, these things are acting also in a dynamic fashion. Um, so it is something that's core to the design and how Halo delivers itself um, for the user experience, uh, which is a bit different than, than some systems where they're not dynamic uh, in nature. Uh, so uh, that's pretty cool. Um, and as you said, you just kind of touched the tip of the iceberg of what you can do uh, with a field to drive your behavior. It's one of those things I talk about with a lot of clients who are going through design and we're going through what, 
what fields need to be there, how do we need them to fill in, you can ensure that <clears throat> folks are following a, a process. Um, and as you said, you can make it required for an agent, but say not required for a customer, because maybe a customer mm -hmm. is filling something in on the portal, and that's not something that they may know the answer to. So we're not requiring them to fill it in. We want to make sure the technician fills it in before that goes for that uh, item to be delivered because it is something that's necessary. Um, so it gives us that massive flexibility to really provide uh, the workflow and the user experience that we're looking for. Uh, it's one of the things I think that makes makes Halo so, so cool uh, from my perspective um, in uh, being able to, to deliver those things uh, to you know, to the customer, uh, but also to the agents and technicians that are consuming the system. Um, so, Tom, thank you for that uh, that little intro. Uh, as we said, we kind of just tip, just touched the tip of the iceberg of the different things that we're able to do. And as you saw, as Tom went through some of those settings, there's a lot of different settings that we have available to us to elicit to 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 have the behavior be what we need it to be. Uh, to provide the right type of customer experience. So thank you, Tom, for joining us. Uh, it's always uh, appreciated when you come in uh, and uh, share uh, a little nugget of knowledge um, on uh, this very exciting platform that we call Halo ITSM.